Good evening, everybody. It is Monday, December 4th, 2023 at 5.45 p.m. And I will call to order the Freetown Board of Stock meeting. Um, this meeting is on Zoom, so I am going to now read the governor's uh, Healy's order. This meeting will be available for in-person attendance and on Zoom. On March 29th, 2023, Governor Healy signed into law Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, which, among other things, extend the expiration of the provisions pertaining to open meeting law to March 31st, 2025. Specifically, this extension allows public bodies to continue to hold uh, holding meetings uh, remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location and to provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. This meeting of the Freetown Board of Selectmen will be conducted in person as well um, as via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines, <clears throat> guidelines for remote participation by members of the public body can be found on the town of Freetown's website, freetownma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen to the, uh, to the meeting may do so in the following manner, downloading Zoom and entering the meeting ID below, calling the number listed and entering the meeting ID listed below, or by going to the link and entering in the meeting ID listed below. Although in-person attendance is available for this meeting, every effort will be made to ensure that the public body can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the town's website and YouTube channel an audio or video recording uh, transcript or other comprehensive record uh, of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. I'm sure you said that it's going to be recorded. Yeah, so, yeah, so to cover our bases, this meeting will be recorded and will be available on the town's YouTube page. Um, so today we will be going into executive session and then coming back into open session. We'll be going into executive session for the following reasons. Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the, pu of the public body and the chair so declares, and I do, law is first, Towns of Freetown. Number two, Mass General Law, Chapter uh, 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, and I do, Margaret Wilkinson versus Pedro Ferreira, TMMA Realty, LLC, Town of Freetown, um, Cynthia Rezekovich, and uh, Adolf Rezekovich. And finally, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. If an open uh, meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, I do, Macomber versus Town of Freetown. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. Now in executive session. All right, so we are now back in open session from executive session. Um, we now have a public hearing. I'll read the notice. So this meeting was continued uh, to December 4th, 2023 at 6 p.m. The yeah, original notice is November 21st, 2023. Public notice, Town of Freetown, the Freetown Board of Selectmen, in conjunction with the Board of Assessors, will conduct a public hearing relative to selection of a residential factor that will determine the percentages of the tax burden to be borne by each class of property for fiscal year 2024. This hearing will be conducted at the police station, community room, 15 Memorial Drive, East Freetown, Mass, 02717, on Wednesday, November 29th, 2023, at 6 p.m. This meeting will also be available virtually. Meeting information is listed below. Uh, this meeting information and further agenda information will be posted on or before the close of business on November 27th, 2023. Freetown Board of Selectmen, Trevor R. Matthews, Jerry C. Zager, and Carlos A. Lopes. All right, do you guys have to open your meeting? Yes, you got to come back yeah. from the recess. Uh, make a, uh, I'd like to have a motion to open up our meeting again from the recess. I will make that motion. I'll second it. All, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're back on. Is we're you might have to do Yeah, we're going to have to do call. roll calls because Mike's on Zoom. That's right. Cause uh, is he there yet? He's on. Okay. Mike, can you hear us? Mr. Marta, can you hear us? We can, yes. Excellent. Good. All right. So now you we're, need to we're going to do a roll call. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mike, okay, we're going to do the roll call vote. Jeff? Yes. Mike? Yes. Paul Sadik, yes. Okay, we're good. Okay, awesome. All right, so let's get right into it. 
So every year it's me trying to relearn how this table works. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. um, so as I've mentioned in the past, you have a whole bunch of different numbers. That second column, uh, which says residential factor at the top of it, uh, obviously none of us are crazy math whizzes. That number is meaningless to everybody, but the state thinks that that is the most important number you will ever see in your life. <laughs> Uh, and that's the number that you're actually voting on tonight. You'll be picking one of the residential factor numbers. Uh, those work in concert with the shift number, which is to the left of that. And that determines what percentage of the tax burden will be borne by which class of property. Residential is a class unto itself, and then commercial, industrial, and personal property um, is the, the other class. So the line that you have highlighted in gray, that is the shift that you selected last year, the 1.595. And if you were to leave the shift exactly as it is, then you would see if you carry that across um, to the two columns that, are, that say difference at the top, if you left the shift alone, the average residential bill would increase by $236. The average commercial bill would increase by $44. Um, obviously, everybody that's sitting in this room is a residential taxpayer, mm -hmm. not a commercial taxpayer. Yeah, that is true. So um, as the shifts get smaller, in other words, as they move up toward the uh, top, toward the 1.5, the residential class bears a higher burden as they uh, shift gets greater and moves toward the bottom of the page. The commercial and industrial and personal property bear the higher burden. 1. Point, <clears throat> excuse me, 1.75, which is the bottom number, is the maximum shift. That is the, the most that you can do. Um, then along with that, you have the other sheet, which gives you just some general highlights. A uh, couple, of, couple of ways the shift has changed in the last, say, four or five years, and some uh, benchmarks that have gone along with that. So uh, the, this year, fiscal 24 and next year, 25, have uh, a lot of things happening all at once. 24, this is Stop and Shop's last year of their TIF. Uh, fiscal 25 will be the first year that Stop and Shop, Stop and Shop right now is assessed at 99% of their value. <clears throat> next year will be their first year at 100%. Next year will be the first time that Stop and Shop ever pays a personal property tax because the old form of TIF completely exempted personal property from the duration of the TIF. That's, that's not a thing anymore. Amazon doesn't get that benefit. Um, so in fiscal 25, aside from the fact that Stop and Shop will be at 100% and they'll start paying personal property, Amazon's TIF will reduce from 75% to 50%, so they'll be kicking in quite a bit more. Um, that will also be the year that we start paying toward the Bristol Plymouth High School, which um, 30 years is a long time. So. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so I would imagine historically the shift has always favored residential to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, next year, you're probably going to take a good hard look at that to try and reduce the Bristol Plymouth burden from the residents, um, especially in a year when the businesses are going to be paying more. But this year, fiscal 24, um, you have the, the chart that's before you to decide what you'd like to do now uh, before any of that becomes a factor. All right. Thank you very much. That's sure. Very informative. Very well spoken. <laughs> Only took three or four years. Now I have an idea of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mr. Mata wants to speak. Um, yeah, if you don't mind. Um, just another point to add to what Mike had said. Uh, Percentage of tax um, that's borne by the residents. You see in the upper left of that um, big spreadsheet, yep. the R percent, 79 percent, and CIP, commercial, industrial, personal properties, almost 21 percent. Um, so there are far more residents value and, and tax amount being paid um, that would be paying that increase. So. Just to point out that if you um, increase that percentage to, let's say, 1.62, that would give you a more even increase 
as far as dollars per year for the average of each of those tax paying groups. Mm -hmm. Um, but the residents will still be paying considerably more total. And that's a little unavoidable just because, as Mike said, we just have so much more residential property yeah, than we do commercial right. property. That makes sense, yeah. And then, <clears throat> so the Amazon and the Stop and Shop changes, right? That should impact this percentage breakdown between like the total value or will not. It should because in the future. Um, I mean, if you look at those numbers, Mike was just giving you the 79% for residents and the 21% for commercial, industrial, personal property. Um, stop and shop paying personal property tax in fiscal 25, that's going to change that percentage considerably. That's because what I was thinking. If you've been through stop and shop, they've got some expensive stuff over there. <laughs> yeah, so um, just their, ban their banana room. It's got to yes. be worth tens of millions. I <laughs> waited until after they showed me the banana room to address personal property with them so that I could see the banana room. <laughs> I think about um, that banana room a lot. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. Um, but that will <clears> – <throat> and Amazon um, – so Amazon, you've got to remember, too, it's built across the town line. So – Take the total value of Amazon, and this is what we in Fall River do, is we value that as if the entire thing was in one town or the other. So we treat it like it's all here. They treat it like it's all there. Mm -hmm. We then have to break it down by where it really is. So you take that total number. We only get 40% of the total number. Gotcha. And at the moment, we're only getting 75% of 40% of the total. So next year, we'll get 50% of 40% of the total. Mm -hmm. But... Um, that is another big expensive place. So you know, that's that's going to help us quite a bit. So that's I would be I would be surprised if you didn't see um, a few percentage points change over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, like like this year, if you left the shift alone, that gray line tells you what it is. Next year, if you leave the shift alone, uh, residential will still make out a little bit because commercial is going to go up that much more. Uh, plus, who knows what else may come over the next year. Mm -hmm. um, Copart was a really big surprise a couple of years ago. You never know when another Copart's going to just pop up out of nowhere. Pro yeah. Probably unlikely, but you never <laughs> know. Yeah. Has this, I mean, and I don't expect you to know this offhand, but like has that, the uh, breakdown between residential and commercial, has that been growing more towards commercial or is it consistently um, kind of been this, uh, you know, 80 20 split i don't actually know um well I can if i had last year's chart oh mike might know <laughs> if you had last year's um, chart you'd know well i can give you some comparison to last year um that the increase in residential assessed value for all of residential was 6.1 percent from 23 fiscal 23 to fiscal 24 and the increase in total commercial was 4.2. Industrial went down by 1.2, and total and personal property went up by 18.3. So there was some considerable increase in personal property. Mm -hmm. um, the total increase. Personal property was about 16 million, commercial is about 3 million, but then that's a wash with the industrial went down about the same amount. So the increase last, over last year in value is 16 million approximately, whereas the increase in residential was 98 million. Gotcha. Residential properties are, a lot of, a lot of the way that we value property is market driven and residential properties are still selling for crazy amounts of money right now. We have still. That affects everything. Right. I mean, we still have, and I'm, I, I know the room that I'm speaking to right now and I know where everybody lives, but <laughs> I think we can all agree that, that we should not be having as many million dollar properties in the Sona Bay Shores as we do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, the idea that people are paying a million dollars or more for quarter acre lots is, is crazy. Yeah. But it's, it's still happening. And it's not just happening there. It's happening. Um, Heaven Heights might be the closest example in East Freetown. We have million dollar sales going on there too. And a few years ago, that would have just been unthinkable. So I remember last year us talking about this and you also bringing up the fact that this tends to linger behind the market, right? It does. So we so. run about 18 months behind. Um, so while <laughs> things are going up, 
people like that because the assessed value is not what the market is. If and when things start to go down, that's when people aren't going to like us very much because mm -hmm. it's going to take 18 months to catch up again. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if I could just make the point that the, um, this is a, a common misconception from for the average person that the value of the property, whether it goes up or down, um, I hear this all the time. People say, well, my property values are going up, so my taxes are going to go up. And that is, that's not how it works. Right. So the property values go up and down and the uh, tax rate goes up and down the opposite to make up for it because the constant is what we need to collect for a levy. Mm -hmm. So given a particular levy, the amount that individuals will pay would be the same regardless of what their value is because overall we're going to make that adjustment in the tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, but to your point, our, we use this year for fiscal 24, we use sales from calendar year 2022. So we are always at two years behind the fiscal year. Um, but as Mike says, it's more like a year and a half because we're doing the work during the, during the prior yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And, and I know Mike uh, Mata made the point last year, and I'll say it again. Uh, town meeting drives a lot of this mm -hmm. because we, we collect more money when we spend more money. So, yep. um, you know, sometimes people will come in for an abatement and they'll say, my taxes went up too much. It, my taxes being too high is not a reason to file for an abatement. My property is not valued correctly would be the reason. But exactly. the taxes are going to be dictated by what people vote to spend. Yep. Right. So. One I'm surprised about here is uh, the single family home average value, right? 500,000, that, that makes sense to me. I'm surprised how low the commercial property one is, 639,000. So with, with the commercial, um, some of that is dictated by lower valued commercial areas. So for example, you may have a home business, you're gonna have a personal property account uh, the personal property account, the value might only be $500 mm -hmm. uh, or less because they may think that you just have a laptop computer. Yeah. So you could have dozens of $400 personal property accounts, but you're not going to have dozens of $400 houses. Mm -hmm. um, all, and, and also that's um, because you have such a higher percentage of residential property and such a variety in the value of the residential property, the commercial is a much smaller pool and um, the ones that are real estate tend to tend to be in that same expense category. Yeah. It's interesting though, to Trevor's point that you would think just, you know, start the stop and shops and Amazons of the world would drive that number to be much higher than that. Right. But I think like it'd be interesting, interesting to see like the, I don't question your numbers. The per, <laughs> like the per square foot value. That's something I think would be interesting. Not, we don't need that for this decision, but mm -hmm. that kind of standardizes it. Right. All right. So any other, like now, I guess, is there a recommendation or I mean, or any kind of input on what you guys are thinking? I know this is a bo this board's decision, right? right. But uh, you know. So the assessors as a board didn't make a recommendation, typically uh, do not, but did in discussion earlier, um, just observe that the shift of 1.615 is the point where the increases in the two classes are relatively similar. They're mm -hmm. both around $200. Um, 1.62, again, keeps them in the same ballpark, but benefits the residents a little bit more because the, res the average residential bill goes up about $45 less. Um, and then I don't remember the context, but the number 1.64 had been thrown out at one point also. Um, 1.64. Right. Because uh, then the residents are still getting, you know, the residential bill on average is going up about $40 a quarter at that point. The commercial bill is going up about $100 a quarter at that mm -hmm. point. And that's, again, that's the average. So that's your $500,000 house. Somebody's got a $300,000 house. It's going to be less if they've got a one of these random million dollar houses it's going to be more yeah um i 
want to favor the residents, obviously. I also don't want to run out businesses. I don't think that, you know, I think a little business is more than I think of the stock and shops and Amazons of the world. Um, I, I shouldn't be throwing them out, you know, but yeah, I think it's a, it's a fine line to walk, right? There's no easy decision with any of this stuff. Oh, it is. You know, you drive around town, whether you're in a Sona or East Freetown, you see the businesses with the lights on and the parking lots are full and people are out there spending money with new restaurants and different things. So you definitely want to promote that growth of mom and pops, right? Um, unfortunately, they kind of get grouped in with the Amazons and stopping shops, right? There's no, you know, fifth, you know, fifth tax rate out there just for mom and pops, which would be fantastic if they were. But you're right, it's gotta be some balance of residents because it's gonna go up a little bit with, with BP and everything else in a couple of years. Um, we also wanna, again, moms and pops, we don't wanna drown them in any additional additional bills so somewhere in the middle is i think we're all discussing right and yep, so it's the happy medium there yeah you know i think that around that 162 mark right because that you said would be about an even or maybe we go yeah, so the one six one point six one five zero i think it's even it's pretty even it's right yeah. 200 206 203 yeah right that's the closest to an even amount that you're going to get oh, yeah, yeah. and you're going to start going um, a little bit further apart is it the 1.62 is it's gonna, yeah it's going to favor the residents a little bit more but it's still that's, in the ballpark that's where i want to yeah be i like that one six two yeah because i think we're giving a little bit to the residents but we're not really like Gouging. Well, I'm sticking it to the businesses, right? right? Like, yeah, I mean, there's got to be a balance in my eyes. So, it's so. probably going to have real tough decisions next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, and, and that's yeah. what I think we're all looking at. Next year is going to be a decision making year because, you know, the tax is going to go up, right? Because of BP, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, well, not tax, debt exclusion, I should say. Let's correct that for the record, right? The debt exclusion will be there, and it, it, and that number is, we just don't taxes know yet. Go up. Right, yeah, taxes will go up no matter how we, and what we, we call it. And we did a big, sorry. No, no, let's go ahead. I did a, we did kind of a larger shift last year against commercial um, than typically seen, right? If I remember correctly, when we went over it last year, we said, you know, we kind of favored more towards the residents and gave it a little bit more yes. of a push than, mm -hmm. than had been done in the past. So last year, um, yeah, last year went from 1.47 to almost 1 1.6. So that was, that was a pretty good jump. Yeah. yeah. So it was a pretty good jump. So once again, we need to, we need to try and think of everyone here. Yeah. Right. Well, last year too, you got to think we had that, that COVID bubble, right? Everything was so much higher last year based on what they were selling for during the, the COVID pandemic. So I think that's one of the reasons we shifted high. So this year, somewhere in the middle, because next year it kind of goes higher again, because again, the debt exclusion and everything else. Uh, but then again, offsetting that will be Stop and Shop and Amazon and Copart and yeah, American. Yeah, interesting to see how it all plays out in the end, to your point, between the two things. Yeah. It, it, will be it definitely won't hurt it. No. <laughs> it won't right. hurt it, right? It's going to be interesting to see what Stop and Shop's personal product, because I can easily see the person who goes out to to do what they call the collection that's the information the data collection for that having to spend a couple of days at stop and shop because that's that's not going to be yeah. and people we talk about the banana room and all that and yeah all the big equipment and machinery and everything but in a commercial facility like a stop and shop they have conference rooms this is personal property in a mm -hmm. business i mean right. this all, yeah. everything we're seeing right here yeah so it's it's going to be Pretty good check and change. It's gonna I be also an wonder, and complete side note, is how they figure out property value on a building that is half in our town, half in Fall River. Like, do they, are they literally walking in and saying, "Okay, this is the wall. This is the wall that divides. So everything on this side is <laughs> so town, everything on that side is Fall River." <laughs> for, for real estate, <laughs> kind of in a way, for personal property, um, Amazon is responsible to report to both communities what is in. Both communities. So some things are going to be fixed. Certain shelves are going to be here. Certain shelves are going to be there. Um, the stuff that's on wheels. I mean, it's what, whatever's cheaper. They wheel it to that yeah. side. <laughs> go over there. Go over the fiscal year. Shift ends. everything to that room. Yeah. And that's why I, I yeah. say it like half heartedly. Like it's yeah. And they did for um, the first year. I'm going to be honest. The first year it was kind of a guess because they only reported to Fall River. They were under the impression that they only had to report to Fall River. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they reported there. They didn't report here. 
uh, Fall River was nice enough to share the information with us, and we kind of had to parse it out as it was. But um, they know now they have to file in both places. Yeah. Um, obviously, they weren't too concerned with the number we came up with because they didn't complain about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. All right. So, any other input on this before we uh, close this hearing and vote? I no, think, I mean, yeah. So, in, to be clear, right? I'm actually we're actually voting on the residential factor. On the factor, yes. So, if the 1.62 is the number that you uh, like, then you'd be pointing on the eight, uh, the point eight three five three. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was one below. I was just thought I was in, all right. Or whichever. I'm not trying to guide you. No, no, no. I hear you. I, I was. I, I think I just circled the. Yes, yeah, it's because yeah. you, you weren't trying to guide him is what I had said, right? So, so don't, yeah. I was looking at the uh, 1.6250 CPI shift. Yes. Okay, the 1.6250. So just the one below that, but. Okay. Yep, so then that would be the uh, 0.8340 is the, is the residential factor you'd vote on. Yeah. Right. <sighs> you guys all right with that? In the, the, what are you looking at? The 8 point. 0.8340. Yeah. So 186 difference, 186.42 difference for the residents, and then 286 difference for our commercial. Yep. Versus the one above, which would be extra $10 and $40 in the other way. Yeah. I, I think residents this year, everything's so expensive from groceries to heating. Um, I, I don't think it's an unreasonable math. No, I, I think it's, it. it's right down the middle and it's uh, common sense. All right. So no one on Zoom. I don't want to make sure I close the hearing prematurely. All right. Mike, you all set? I am. Thank you. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. A motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second vote? Yes. Second Zayder. Yes. Second Yes. And then I'll move on to agenda item four. So I'll entertain a motion to select the residential factor of 0 0.8340 um, to determine the percentage of tax burden to be borne by each class of property. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. 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 Do you guys want to close your your? You I think we're good. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Motion to close that meeting. We'll make a motion that we adjourn. Okay. Motion made. Second. I'll second that. All. Uh, Mike can second it. Where's Mike? Can you hear me? There he was. Yeah, on the internet. Okay. You want to second that? <laughs> yes. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll take a roll call. Jeff? Yes. Mike? Yes. Paul? Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Guys. Great explanation of, of, oh, thanks. of all this. Thank you. We should just record Thank that you for next year. You should have that little. Chat GPT will do it. Listen, he rehearsed that. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the website because I'm sure someone will ask. <laughs> Uh, all right. Good night, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So moving on to agenda item five, this is a discussion of vote whether to approve the disclosure forms regarding financial interest identified um, by the special municipal employee form. And the employees here are uh, Thomas E. Ashley Jr., Logan A. St. Louis, and Samantha R. Cardin, and Matthew M. Bohms. And so, yeah. Anything to know on this one, Dub? Standard, right? Yeah, these are just the employees that um, work uh, multiple positions. Dis dispatch, they'll fill in for dispatch when dispatch is short. Yeah. But they're, you know, police officers, firefighters that have started out as dispatchers and have the experience. And so sometimes when they have an off shift from their full-time regular job, they will fill in on a shift for dispatch. So it's a benefit to the town to have somebody who's got the knowledge they have. Absolutely. Fill in. Mm -hmm. But these are important. I do know of a lawsuit recently, which, which this form, exact, this exact form from this town came up. So it's good that we do it. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the disclosure forms regarding financial um, Interest identified by the special needs employees listed before. Oh, make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Slackman Lopes. Yes. Slackman Zager. Yes. Slackman Matthews. Yes. All right, agenda item six. This is open session minutes from 11 20, 2023. Any discussion? No. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the open session minutes from 11 20, 2023. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right, agenda item seven. This is discussion of vote whether to approve the 2024 seasonal population increase estimate form required by the alcohol. Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, ABCC. <laughs> so the estimate will be 9,236. Correct. And 30 seasonal. <laughs> Big seasonal population, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I wonder, like, some places are probably like, like Nantucket, for example, <laughs> mostly. Uh, see it's the like, opposite of that. Right. All right. So yeah. yeah, so that's interesting because we have three liquor licenses right now, and that's what this is all based off of. And it normally ten thousand in order to get the third liquor license. It was something done wrong many years ago when there's three licenses in the town that really shouldn't have them. Yeah. So. Mm. It does. This does not. And the reason why I bring that up is this does not affect the amount of liquor licenses that can be uh, gotcha. gone after in this town. So interesting. Yeah. And I, I have to assume that this number will be going up in the next couple of years. But yes. Yeah. All right. Great. So without entertain a motion to or actually any discussion. Sorry. Good. No. No. Just don't. All right. So without entertain a motion to approve the 2024 seasonal population increase estimates form required by the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Zager. Yes. Selectman Math uh, Matthews. Yes. Selectman Lopes. Yes. Um, so next is related, but it's uh, well, whether approved approve the 2024 renewal certification form for the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Anything special there? No, it just oh. cites that anyone that did not um, fail, they failed to renew or the board has disapproved the licenses, which we don't have either of those cases, but they still need the form signed. Gotcha. All right. So with that, I'll intend a motion to approve the 2024 renewal certification uh, certification form for Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes. Yes. Selectman Zager. Yes. Selectman Matthews. Yes. All right, Gen Item 9, this is oh, whether to approve the following 2024 all alcoholic beverages liquor license renewals with MH uh, Juniors Inc. slash Juniors as A, B, Circle K, S Store 7518, and C, K&E Liquors Inc., DBA Cross Road Liquors. Any issues with those? No. 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 All right, so with that, I'll a motion to approve um, the listed uh License renewals for the 2024 Alcoholic Beverage Liquor License. Motion made. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. Now we have the 2024 Wine and Malt Beverage Liquor License renewals. And this is A, m &H Grandpa's Inc., B, Mason Road Food Mart Corp., and C, Neon Beverages, LLC. Any issues with those? No. No. All right. Without a motion to approve the listed... Um, um, wine and malt beverage liquor license applicants for 2024. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. I'm making your life a little harder with the minutes, just changing the way I'm saying every uh, motion. So I apologize <laughs> for that. <laughs> and ne next we have uh, the 2024 alco all alcohol liquor to be drunk on premise license renewals. And we have A, uh, Crossley. Parsley Inc., which is a ledge, B, Independence Harbor Inc., C, Profile Rock Inc., uh, slash the Profile Tavern, and D, Freetown Memorial Post um, 6643 VFW. Any issues with those? No. Nope. Great place. Yes. With that, I'll a motion to approve the uh, listed uh, company, uh, listed on premise liquor license renewals for 2024. Motion made. Second. Oh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. 
Next up, we have the entertainment license renewals. So we have Independence Harbor A, Independence Harbor Inc., B, Profile Rat, Rock, Slash Profile Tavern, and C, Freetown Memorial Post 6643 VFW. Any questions or concerns? No. No. Um, so with that, I want to a motion to approve the listed applicants for the 2024 entertainment license renewals. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. Jedi 13, this is for the annual license renewals for um, for jukebox and, auto, ju, jukebox and automatic device license, which is hilarious to me that you need a license for that. But, yeah. Uh, I know it's... I guess it takes money. I guess yeah. it's one yeah, of those things. Yeah, that, I get it. Yeah. It's just... But we do laugh at it every day. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so and this is for the Freetown Memorial Post 6643 VFW. Any issues with that? No. No. All right. So, that will intend a motion to approve the uh, jukebox and automatic device license for Freetown Memorial Post 6643 VFW. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Now we have 2024 renewals for Class 2 motor. Vehicle license, we have uh, A, Armin R. Clermont, DBA Clermont's Auto Garage. Auto sales. Auto sales. Uh, B, Roger L. Donnell, DBA Bowler's Garage. And C, Basic Equipment, Inc., Base used, car, base used Cars, Trucks and Equipment. Any discussion on those? No. No. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the listed um, Companies for the 2024 renewals of Class 2 motor vehicle license. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. And Gen 9 and 15, this is for the 2024 renewal of Class 3 motor vehicle license. And we have Donald F. Mendoza, Mendoza uh, Jr., DBA DM Auto Enterprise. Any issue with that? No. No. Now, I'm going to a motion to approve the 2024 renewal. Class 3 motor vehicle license for Donald F. Mendoza, Jr., DBA, DM Auto Enterprises. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right. Now, agenda item 16. This is a vote on possible use of 4 South Main Street for a pump station. So this is the red building in the center of town. That's an ill repair. Um, the selectmen have previously voted to try to sell this building. Um, I think we got permission at town meeting to sell the building. But as we're going through the design of the sewer, uh, the sewer line, we need a location for a pump station. Um, previously, we've tried to buy the lot, the empty lot to try to put it there. So at this point, I just want to make sure that um, the selectmen are okay with it not going on the market until we at least get further down the line uh, with the pump with the sewer line um, engineering, because I think we're going to need to put it. Now, when I talk about a pump station, it would go underground. So it would be something that- You that, could still have a, a building. Like uh, if, if someone does, well, sorry, let me think about this. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Oh, oh. So most likely the building's <laughs> going to need to come down yeah. so, so, sooner than later. And then the pump station would could go underground, be submersible. So you wouldn't be looking at a pump station there you could still make it something pleasing. You could put a facade around it, a building, if the, the town's so true, so I'm not sure that that makes sense. But um, I just don't want you to think it to be this big, ugly yeah, yeah, pump yeah. in the middle of town. It could be submersible underground. And I actually have had pictures because I was looking at it for the other lot that we were trying to purchase um, previously. So I just want to make sure that everybody was aware and, and, and that the selectmen were okay with that course of action for right now until we... And if we sell it, then we're going to be looking for a place to put a pump station, and I don't know where we would yeah. um, because you know we're at the bottom of the hill, right You're at the town that's the hall. Low point. Yeah, yeah. so like most anything, common area. It would have to go up. Um, right. and we do have we're working. You know, we have a couple of locations to do them on the other side, up, up, um, towards the industrial park. But down there, that's really the only location the town has. I have a question. So, of the other lot, right? So obviously. Went to town meeting, we tried to get money to buy that other lot for a bunch of different reasons. Um, you know, parking as well as, you know, pump station, pump station and, system. and access to the other building, which is another reason, but we didn't get that, right? If we were to get like funding some other mechanism, right? Say it was, say if it was a grant, 
Could we buy property with? So you can buy property, but I, you can you you could use other funds for sure. But I think that the the deed would still have to go before the town's people to be accepted. Okay. I think the town would be okay with accepting it if it's quote unquote free of charge. Um, right. My question for you is um, historic society. They were very big on, right. okay, we can take the building down, but they want something back up that looks like it. Um, what, have we talked with them about it at all yet? I haven't or? talked to them about this recently, but that's why I was saying you could almost, you could build a building with that facade to house the pump station if you chose to not put it underground. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's just very preliminary. I just wanted to make sure, you know, I'm doing these things and thinking about what makes sense, but not necessarily always communicating. So I just wanted yeah. to make sure we're all on the same page. But speaking of the historical, they are the one committee that doesn't need permission. To, that they're, If they were to get a deed to something, it doesn't have to go to town meeting. Don't ask me why, but they have that um, ability to do that. But then, of course, they're going to put all the restrictions on it that they want to and control it. Um, it might be okay, though. It's not, not necessarily a bad thing, but they would still have to get the funding from somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that the problem, right? I um, I don't see why we wouldn't, why we would put it on the market at this point. It stands us, quote unquote, nothing at this point, right? Um, why why take it down or do anything well no we'll take it down we have to do that at some point but why sell it off to find out that we need to buy a lot next door or somewhere else and pay that much more it's just crazy to me so um, um i mean in all reality we could use opera funds to purchase that which is grant you know grant monies from the covid uh, but then we would still have to go to town meeting and get it accepted right we do have some opera funds Remaining, I'm talking about federal opera funds because you know there's different buckets of opera money. I still have some money in the opera, which sooner or later, um, it has to be sent. It has to be declared of what you're going to spend it on by the end of 24, and then it has to be actually spent by 26. So even like this extension, the sewer line extension engineering, there's some opera funds being used for that. Um, uh, that like I have to make sure everything's done by a certain date. And I wonder, here's my other question is, is that land that that building is on right now enough to house the pump station? Um, or are we still going to have, we're talking about it and we're saying, okay, we want to use this for this, but then we still have to buy the corner lot in order to make yeah, it. I don't, I believe it is right. Because the pictures I've seen from them and I can get you more information there. It's not that big. Mm -hmm. So the submersible ones, not that big, but what I'd like to, I mean, we've got other things going on, right? The four corners. We're in the process of working on the four corners. Um, we're going to do a mock roundabout at the school just to see if what they're proposing would work with some of the bigger trucks, the fire engine, school bus, um, some of the businesses in town. Okay, Arizendis has has um, agreed to let, you know bring in one of their low beds that they are concerned with. Mm -hmm. To try it out, let's let's do a mock and see if this yeah. is going to work. And if, yeah. and if not, I mean, we may need to get some of the property on the corner. We may need more. Um, so I think it's sort of like to be determined over there because I would love to see a little area that's cleaned up. Welcome to a sauna established in 1683. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some park benches because, you know, people do walk down and then they go to Hathaway Park. It'd be a nice place to say, hey, I'm going to take a break for a second. Um, so I think that there's possibilities there that would really benefit the town, would really look neat and nice. And we could still put our pump station underground with a couple of bushes with the, you know, the vent that might come out of the yeah. top or something. Um, maybe still even get a few parking spots that we need for the town hall in the short term. Um, we're, you know, the, the town hall is a whole nother issue. You know, it's quickly becoming critical because we have no space. We have no space internally. We're on top of each other and parking is an issue. So I think, I think that right now where we're at, I just want to make sure we're, you know, that you're not all waiting for me to put it on the market and I haven't done my job, no. that you're okay with me holding it as we are evolving and trying to get, get some of this stuff. I don't think we should make any rash decisions that we're going to regret later on. So, yeah, so um, no, it, like the purpose of us going to town meeting to get that, that corner lot, that corner property was to provide the town with more options. 
for all the things that as this town, whether we love it or hate it, continues to grow, move forward into the future. We needed options for things that you just discussed, whether it's a pump station, parking, park benches, a roundabout. That's what the town needs moving forward. You know, unfortunately we tried twice, it didn't work out. That's the town, the town's will, and that's what we'll stick with. That red building, it's a different story, right? Is it an eyesore? Yes. Will it fall down on its own someday? More than likely, right? Uh, based on the assessments and the reports we've gotten. But at the end of the day, we do need options for the sewer line because that the sewer is key for this town to move forward, right? For the businesses, for the residents and everything. So that is one of the best options we have to date because we own it, right? Unless by some act of God or some money falls into our lap, we get that corner lot. The red building is the, right now our best option. Right. So leaving it off the market, it's probably the best, the best idea. Right. And as far as the historical side, to, to Jared's point, I was going to ask the same question. What's their opinion? What's their thought? I know we've worked with them to get to where it is today. Right. I know they want something up there that resembles, you know, what the building used to look like or what it looks like today. And I think that's still doable with the, all the options in front of us. So. All right. So are we looking here for a vote of just, you know, is the vote for the possible use or for the use? I think it was just, you know, I, I think for me, it's just more of a, you know, that I'm not putting, you know, I'm actively not putting it on the market. Yeah. I would say a vote to hold it yeah. as town property. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's fine. I'll entertain, I'll entertain a motion yeah, to not sell for, uh, not, not mark list for South Main Street uh, because of the potential uses of a pump station in the future. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Yes. Selectman Zager. Yes. Selectman Matthews. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, we can always change that vote if, right. there's a, if there comes a reason. Something changes. Yep. All right. And now this is uh, just a contract between the town of Freetown and industrial communications for radio communications improvements. <clears throat> this is just this moving is, along. Yeah. This is for the radio tower communication project. This is the installation of the equipment on the towers. And that's what this is. And just an FYI, we did get offer approval for the remaining money awesome. for the Fantastic. town project. That's so great. Congratulations. Both leases have yeah, both leases have been executed. This is now the contract for installation of equipment. Um, I will be working on the purchase orders to order the remaining equipment. So we are moving right along with this. That's exciting. I love it. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract between the town of Freetown and industrial communications for radio communications improvements. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. All right, now we have uh, agenda item 18, session of vote whether we're authorized town administrator to sign contracts agreements of value up to $3,000. I like where this is going. <laughs> yeah, this is just procedural, right? We we get little things, we annual renewals of maintenance contracts for five hundred fifty dollars. Technically, all the contracts need to be signed by the select uh, yeah. men, um, and it just it's can be very procedurally heavy for us in terms of paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, as I said, it might be just easier if I can sign some of these things, just small small contracts. Yep. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Any, any discussion on that? No, and for, for those, uh, the Hawks at home, she may be signing the contracts, but we'll still be aware of the contracts, right? There's no signing the contracts and, and it just kind of happens. We'll still be in the mix of things, but it just, this cuts a lot of the red tape of going back and forth. Um, so it's just a good thing for the town. And sometimes it's difficult to get, uh, you know, all three of our signatures, right. you know, someone's on vacation, something has to wait for, you know, so this just makes sense. Correct. I, I, I agree. All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, authorize town administrator to sign contracts agreements of value up to $3,000. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Blackman Lopes? Yes. Blackman Zaga? Yes. Blackman Matthews? Yes. All right. Agenda item 19. This is discussion about whether to approve the flag and banner flying policy. Let me just pull that policy. Yes. So this is something, you know, we've seen a lot of other towns have this policy um, or a, a similar policy. And it's just to avoid any kind of confusion of what we will and will not fly from a flag perspective on town property. So this just makes it 
crystal clear. Mm -hmm. um, and we recently realized we didn't have one. Right, I think this stems from a lot of what happened up in uh, in Boston, correct? I, I believe this was something that they tried to fly or they they, they got sued or something, yeah. some, uh, some litigation that was there to make sure that, you know, if you're letting one flag fly, you let all the flags fly. And this clarifies what our stance is in that policy. Yep. Right. Am I, am I correct in that? Yeah, that's Perfect. Yep, exactly. Perfect. So I'll just read the policy. So the town of Freetown's flagpoles and other town owned properties are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public. The town may display the following flags as an expression of the town's official sentiments uh, at town owned properties. So the three are one flags owned by uh, flags of government recognized by the United States. Two flags in conjunction with official town events or ceremonies and three flags or banners in conjunction with official actions, ceremonial items, P, uh, POW, MIA military service of the uh, United States of America, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Massachusetts, and the town of Freetown flag. So I think this should be pretty clear mm -hmm. and we don't have to, you know, get involved in any kind of uh, controversies. <laughs> right. <laughs> have you guys seen the Freetown flag? Which one? Well, that kind of, the, the, the one that's at the, the state house? The official free top flag. Uh, I don't know if I have. It's uh, I, I say we, I say we get one up. Oh yeah, it looks, it looks pretty neat. Oh, absolutely. It has the free, has the profile rock, has like a cross on it. It's got a couple other things. It's a lot of historical monuments in town, and uh, it, it's it's pretty nice. Awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah. Okay, so with that, I will entertain a motion to approve the flag and banner flying policy. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Slackman Lopes? Yes. Slackman Zager? Yes. Slackman Matthews? Yes. All right now we have two snowplow contracts for 2023-2024. Uh, Dennis DeMoranville Jr. and Heath H. Chase. Any questions or concerns? No. So now I'll entertain a motion to approve those uh, two listed individuals for 2020, winter 2023 and 2024 snowplow applications. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Lopes. Yes. Selectman Zager. Yes. Selectman Matthews. Yes. Almost caught. All right. Personnel. <laughs> I, was, I was waiting as far as like, here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, personnel, uh, item agenda 21, acknowledge the resignation of Emily Andors from the Cultural Council effective 11 2023 Thank you, Emily, for your service with the Cultural Council. Uh, item agenda 22, discussion and vote on whether to approve the request for retirement incentive for Chief Harry Ashley Jr. effective 1-4-2024. For those at home, no, uh, Chief Ashley is not retiring today. Um, this is uh, going out to when he retires in 2027. Um, what, what that will make that will put him at 42 years of service at that wow. point. So there are um, provisions in his contract that you know um, it makes it makes sense to start now, so that when he does retire, those provisions are in place and he retires, and then uh, and uh, there's no issues with the town or him, and everyone's happy moving forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, any, any discussions, questions, concerns? I got plenty of concerns. <laughs> <laughs> they assure us that there will be yeah, a succession I plan in place. <laughs> I only took some action the other day personally. So, so yeah, no. Um, yeah. And, 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 chief, and the chief is a planner by nature. So, this is, um, you know, he, I think he wrote that in, in his letter to us as well. So, this goes, this is, this is who he is and this is how that whole department is. So, uh, to congrats to them to, uh, putting this in place ahead of time, uh, three years out. So make sure that someone is in this place. So good on them. Any questions? Nope. Any? Nope. All right. I change the motion to approve the request for retirement incentive for chief Harry Ashley junior effective one, four, 20, 20, one, four, 2024. I'll make that motion. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. So item agenda 23 is similar to um, Chief Ashley. This is the Deputy Chief uh, Neil LaFleur. And this is a discussion and vote on whether to approve the request for retirement incentive for Neil LaFleur, effective 1-4-2024. Again, just like we discussed with Chief Ashley, this is uh, a 2027 retirement, and it, um, and it's just getting their ducks in a row, getting ready for that. So, um, with that said, I entertain the motion to approve the request for retirement incentive for Neil Lafleur, effective 1-4-2024. Make that motion. I will second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Selectman Lopes? Yes. Selectman Zager? Yes. Selectman Matthews? Yes. Right. Thank you. You're off the hook tonight. 
<laughs> sure. Yes. And uh, Deb, let's say 24, you, you have a COA grant? Yeah, I just wanted to um, let you know that Rebecca Fries, the director of the COA, applied for a grant for a to add a nutrition program to the senior center. She'll be serving, I believe, hot lunches Tuesdays and Thursdays to the seniors. And she applied for this grant, her first one, and she, she got the grant. Wow. So a shout out to her. That's uh, awesome. for just constantly looking for ways to improve their services to the seniors and food. Um, food is a big one for the seniors because things are so expensive and it's difficult for them. So it helps with their socialization, where they're able to come to the senior center and have a hot meal. And she's going to combine that with having a public nurse available in case there's any, you know, just a quick blood pressure, things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a nice program for the town and for the seniors. So Shout out to Rebecca for um, her efforts in getting that done. Awesome. All right. Great. Yes. Good job, Rebecca. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Rebecca. All right. So anything else? I think we're good to go here. We just got to do some signatures and then we will. I some mean a lot. Adjourn. Yeah. I just, oh, yeah. This is going to be a lot. a lot of yeah. licenses. Make sure yeah. I stretch out my hands here. Start stretching. This one, right? Oh yeah, roll it. Just me. Let's go over here. Yeah, I'm probably give a shout out to the uh, was it the cultural council that did lights on. Mm -hmm. the oh yeah, yeah. It, was like, it, looked really nice. it was a great event. The weather wasn't the best, yeah. but the, it was a great event. So. There's a lot of hard work that goes into that, too. Yeah. Too bad that the weather wasn't cooperating, but yeah. they still... It was still a good amount of people. And you know what's funny is we were talking about it was the adults were underneath the canopies complaining, <laughs> and the kids were running around, <laughs> and they, they could kill us. <laughs> yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. So a great thank you to them, because I know... They do a lot of work, and you know we know they had a squirrel invasion this year. So, okay, thank you. Now, do you know if because of the squirrel invasion, maybe chipmunks? We don't want to rule out any chipmunks. Um, are they going to put the stuff back in the same location? Do we fix that problem? As far as like uh, locking up the, uh, I don't know. well, everything's up right now, so I don't know where they'll store it after it comes down. We'll have to have a discussion with facilities. It's kind of funny, but not funny. But my brother had the same issue with all his Christmas lights. He had them out in the shed out back, and they got the squirrels got into them. My outdoor furniture, the like it's like kind of wicker weave kind of, and they ate something. I think it was chipmunks actually. We painted the schoolhouse last year. And they, um, you know, fixed all of the rotten clapboards and whatnot. And then the squirrel ate right through the clapboard to get back in the building because we had trapped the squirrels and brought them out. Yeah. And he ate right through the clapboard. Like, yeah. it's it's incredible. And then one time, one of them ate the window. Like, just ate the, the window, the, I don't know what you call it, the panes <laughs> yeah, in the window. Well, they probably buried some of them, their uh, their yeah. treats, their nuts, uh, yeah. or whatever, acorns, yeah, whatever they're so, hiding. Yeah, they were they were getting in. And the insulation, they're probably no. I want that back. It's like that. <laughs> so we That's had to replace tree. it again. Yeah. It's like worked very hard in knocking those off the tree. Boy, your arm getting tired holding all those things. Yeah, it's getting lighter and lighter. Mm -hmm. You really do. Yeah. I have to give a shout out because Lola did a lot of these licenses, and she's a huge help too. So, thank you. Oh, yeah. Not well, even the corner. <laughs> Messed out on her first shadow. <laughs> See when she does the notes. <laughs> Say something with like two papery or something like that. And this one has four. Yep, I saw that. Mm -hmm. These these little uh 
like tags or lifesavers. There's three of them on this one. We just there's four. Oh. They missed, we get them all. Now. I might have missed them. Send it back if they're not all three. I just look for the yellow tabs. Yeah, you sign that one, and then I'm gonna send that back to him for the. I think they won't take the stamp for us. Yeah, of course. The history of motor vehicles was fun because they rejected one of us. All right, there's another place. Okay, so this is all Okay. Ooh, good so, luck with that one. So this one Bobby is, is um, the back two pages. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I missed a bunch on this one. You two, and then two on the other. The same thing on the other one. Oh, you say that word. Three weeks from today is Christmas, guys. No, all oh, you guys doing is you're shopping. Oh, I, awesome. haven't, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Why? Uh -huh. Could you tell by the exaggeration? Yeah, I struggle with it every year. You need both. I just said, no problem with that. I'm not sure, but then I decide those are Christmas gifts. There you go. <laughs> yeah, my wife does that. She she starts the thing the next the day after Christmas. She starts shopping for next year. Yeah. Certain things, yeah. She's she's way more prepared than I. I just I, my worry is always that I'm going to buy something that will know that that okay? need it or want it. Yes, that's when those regulations. Oh, 1990. Yeah. Gotcha. Just looks a little funny in my eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back down to two on that one. Sign on top of this. Uh, I'm happy for him, but I'm yeah, also sad. Yeah. Oh, I need to return a bunch of uh, binders I have. I have a ton of binders in my house. Last like, past year, <laughs> blue hands like that. We'll take them. Yeah, remind me. I had told them that I'll I, bring them all. I had returned that I. That's what. They get them out of my. Well, you are. Thanks, <laughs> did, I, did I miss that one, Joe? I don't know you have. the last page. That's where we both missed the same ones. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are ready to go. Like it. <laughs> See, she gives you the look at the end. So, so she says, shifts through it over the years. So you guys start learning. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't have to you down tomorrow. That's right. Got that one. Got that one. That one. I, think, I think we're good. <laughs> All right, yeah, just, I'll put this right here. These. Yep, those those were already I think right. Did you did you hand this to me? 
No. No, I think those ones I signed are I signed. Those are the ones she ones. handed you that were just the you, first right? ones I signed. Yeah, I don't want to okay. screw your pile up. Okay. Make sure I didn't miss them. <laughs> all the hard work. Lola, great job. Okay. They all, all look right. good. So with that, they I all will, look good. <laughs> I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. 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 yes.